Welcome to our tutorial about how to write a script for a mortgage calculator. We're going to use the following formula you see here. The calculation on top is what we're going to put into our program. Its appropriate mathematical notation is written below, and at the bottom is a definition of what the variables stand for to help us interpret what this formula means. The uppercase P, I, and L, or the principal amount, annual interest rate, and the length in years of the loan are going to be our parameters. J and N, or the monthly interest in decimal form, and the number of months over which the loan is amortized, are going to be our variables. M is our monthly payment, and that will be our function. First, let's set up our form. We need one button and three text boxes. Now we need five label controls. Label 3, Label 4, and Label 5 here. All right, now let's name and caption our controls appropriately both for our ease of use and for the user. My first label will be Purchase Price. My second label is Loan Term. My third label will be Interest Rate. Label 4 will be Monthly Payment. Oh, I see a spelling mistake on my third label. I'll have to go back and fix that. Okay, let's rename our text boxes. The first will be TXT Price. The second I'll call TXT Interest. And let's use a capital I there. Actually, interest rate is box number three, so let me switch these two around. I can simply drag them. This text box will be TXT Loan Term. Now let's make some changes to label number five. Let's call it LBL M Payment, Monthly Payment. Let's change the auto size property to false and modify the background color as well. Let's say silver. Let's also change the font. We'll make it a bold 10 point. I'll center the text and I'll leave the label caption empty. Last control the button. First, let's change its name, BTN Calculate. Let's also change the caption to Calculate. Let's insert a module. We'll leave its default name in place. And now let's enter some code in our module. Public function. Space. The name of our function is going to be payment. Open parenthesis. By val. The first parameter will be principal as double, comma, by val, 
and the second parameter will be interest rate as double. Comma, bival. Now let's enter our third parameter. The loan term, space as a double, and let's close the parenthesis, space as string, and hard return. By the way, to break the code line, we can use an underscore. This will better organize the code visually for a subsequent interpretation at a glance later on. Let's look at our end function statement. It's underscored by a green wavy line. That's because the function doesn't return any value yet. Let's declare our variables now. dim dbl interest rate decimal as a double our next variable will be dim integer number months as an integer hard return and dim dbl result also as a double Next, dbl, tab, space, equal sign, interest rate. We'll start entering our formula here. Forward slash for division, space, open parenthesis, 12, space, the multiplier operator, space, 100, close parenthesis, and hard return. Next line, int, number months, tab equals loan term multiplied by 12. Next line, DBL result equals principal space multiplied by space open parenthesis DBL tab space forward slash space open parenthesis one space minus sign space open parenthesis one space plus sign space DBL interest rate dis close parenthesis space carrot space minus sign interest number months tab and close both sets of parentheses wow that was some formula let's hard return return we're going to use the format function to return a value that's formatted as currency let's open up some parentheses dbl result comma, space, open double quotations, currency, close double quotations, and close our parentheses. At this point, we've pretty much finished typing the code for the payment function. One more thing. Let's right-click and copy this formatting statement. Now let's paste it below. I'm going to comment out the first formatting statement. Now let's replace the keyword return to the name of our function, payment, equals. For these purposes, we can use the keyword return or we can also use the function name. Basically, these two lines of code produce the exact same result. 
As you may have noticed, my spelling isn't the best, so good thing for the automatic syntax check that Visual Basic does for me. Payment. Now everything looks fine. A couple words now about the buy val keyword. It stands for buy value. Another option is buy ref or buy reference. Buy val retrieves the value from the interest rate argument. Now if this value had changed inside the function, using the buy val keyword doesn't allow the new value to be passed back to the calling code. If we'd use the keyword buy ref instead, it would mean that if the argument value changed inside the function, this value would be passed back to the calling routine. This is a very significant difference, of course. Okay, let's review the logic in my script thus far. We receive three arguments, the principal, interest rate, and loan term. We use these arguments to perform some math routines that return a string formatted as currency. Okay, let's go back to our form. Select the object name from this drop-down menu, BTN Calculate, and Method Click. Let's declare our first variable. DBL principal as a double. Now space, equal sign space. Let's initialize it with the value from the text property of the text box txt price. Next line, dim, oops, dispose. That doesn't sound right. We need dim. Okay, dim space double rate as a double. And let's initialize this as well. Space equal sign space txt interest period text hard return. Next line, dim, space, dbl loan term as a double. We're going to initialize this one as well. Space, equal sign space, txt loan term, period, text. And the last variable we'll use is dim str string as a string. And on second thought, let's not initialize this one. And we're going to need to rename it as we had previously. Let's call it result. Okay. str result space, equal sign, space. Next, we type the function name, payment. We see a help window that helps us enter the arguments. The first will be DBL principal. Let's accept with a tab, comma, space, DBL rate, comma, space, and the last argument, dbl loan term. And let's close the parenthesis. Last line of code. Ooh, there is a syntax error to fix here. Let's repair that. Okay, down to our last line of code. lblm payment. Period. Text. Space. Equal sign and space. STR result. And let's take a moment to review our logic. We retrieve the values from the text boxes. We pass them through the variables into the function payment. Let's save everything and let's run our program to see how it works. Oh, I had forgotten about that spelling mistake in interest rate. Let's go and fix that. 
We'll go back to our form and modify the text property of label number two, I believe. Let's run our program again. Okay, we'll enter a purchase price of $100,000. I think you can still buy something for that price. Probably not in California. We'll give us a 30-year loan term at 7% interest. And let's calculate. We end up with a monthly payment of $665.30. It's formatted correctly as currency. After we've finished with our module, we can reuse it if we need to, saving it as a separate file and bringing it into another program if we'd like to. And this concludes our tutorial about how to build a mortgage calculator.